you are watching a 123sonography.com video. We provide innovative teaching materials on echocardiography. Please visit us at www.123sonography.com to see more. So let's see how we can assess a patient with either ischemic or dilated cardiomyopathy. I'll start with the parasternal long axis view. And as you can clearly see, the patient has significantly reduced left ventricular function. We have akinesis of the septum and residual contractile function of the posterolateral region. Very important, the motion of the mitral valve. We can see that the mitral valve has a myopathic motion, which is caused by the reduced cardiac output, simply because the valves are not pushed open. We can also take a look at mitral regurgitation. We see that there is some degree of MR, which is probably mild and not significant. I'll come to that later. Then we will perform a two-chamber view to take a look at the contractile function here in all the different views. However, the problem is that from the transducer position, we are probably not optimal to really record an emote. I would probably prefer to perform the emote here since I can move the transducer or move the imaging, emote imaging plane towards the apex. Nevertheless, even though if I get a signal here, I will have to be very cautious to use this emote to really get a good feel for the size of the left ventricle. Nevertheless, let's see what we get. So we will get an end diastolic diameter, which is somewhere in the region of 90 millimeters, which is significantly enlarged. Let's now turn to the apical views. This is the apical view where we get very nice image quality. However, the problem we have in this view is that we are not truly at the apex and that we have some degree of foreshortening. So to optimize this view, I would probably go one intercostal space further down. The trade-off I have here is that I do lose image quality. Nevertheless, if you perform volume measurements, you should try to use the imaging plane, which gives you the largest ventricle. So how would I go about? I would then freeze the image and then trace the endocardial contour in diastole. See, the problem is that the ventricle is so large that it cannot be imaged in the sector. So I'll have to cheat a bit here. Nevertheless, I would get an end diastolic volume of 490, so almost 500 millimeters in the four chamber view. We've performed the same measurements also in the two chamber view. And if we then calculate the total volume from the 4 and 2, uh, the volume would then be approximately 450 milliliters. So let's look at the two-chamber view. Again, we see the regional wall motion, abnormalities at the apex, and the residual contraction of the posteromedial of the inferior and basal inferior and mid-inferior segments. Okay, and let's go back to the four-chamber view, and then we would also calculate the end systolic diameter, our end systolic volume. And by doing so, we would then get, if we recorded this, an ejection fraction of 22-23%, which correlates quite nicely with the measurements we had from the parasternal position, the M-mode measurements, and also our visual impression of the ventricle. Now let's turn to diastolic function. The diastolic function, this patient can be assessed with the help of post-wave Doppler. What we see is, we see that the 
A wave is taller than the E wave, so we have impaired relaxation. This is an important finding, especially in the setting of this patient, because it does show that the left atrial filling pressures are probably not very high. And this is truly the case because we also performed E to E prime calculations using tissue Doppler. And there we found an E to E ratio of something in the range of 10, 9, 10, 11. Uh, so again, this is indicative of fairly normal or at least mildly elevated left atrial filling pressures. So this just shows that the patient is probably compensated quite nicely due to diuretic therapy and AC, uh, ACE inhibitors and other medications. Now I'll show you the atria. You can see the size of the left atrium. Just with a 2D measurement is just mildly enlarged, maybe a measurement which is somewhere in the range of 50 millimeters. So just from this measurement, there does not seem to be significant dilatation. The patient is also in sinus rhythm. But just to confirm this, let's also perform a measurement of the left atrial area. And we get 22.3. So almost normal size of the left atrium. Equally important is the right ventricle. And if we just look at the right ventricle, we can see that it is of normal size and of normal contractile function as well. This again just shows that the patient seems to be compensated. And this is a very good prognostic sign if we have good right ventricular function. Now let's turn to the mitral valve and let's look at the mitral regurgitation signal very difficult to actually image the signal. As soon as you move the transducer a bit, we're out of the plane. This shows that regurgitation is probably very little, mild at most. And again, this is an important finding because to have significant mitral regurgitation in the setting of reduced left ventricular function is not good for the left ventricle. And it also shows that not all patients with dilated left ventricles have secondary uh, mitral regurgitation. And finally, to complete this case, we'll also look at tricuspid regurgitation. There's just mild tricuspid regurgitation here. And let's try to measure the pulmonary pressure. So I'll just give you the signal we had previously. This is the signal we got in this patient just a few minutes ago. And we see that the pulmonary pressure is mildly elevated, but certainly not significantly. Again, this fits very well with our general impression that the patient is well compensated at this time. Okay. So in conclusion, this patient has ischemic cardiomyopathy with very large left ventricle, significantly reduced left ventricular function, but only mild mitral regurgitation, only mild pulmonary hypertension, with only mildly enlarged left atrium, with good right ventricular function, and with only mildly elevated left atrial filling pressures. So the patient is still very good uh, compensated quite nicely despite uh, his, his uh, significantly reduced left ventricular function.